Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis 26. And there was a famine in the land, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar, or Gerar, however. All right, famines in the Bible are God's attention getters. They're judging against sin. You find them, there's one in the book of Ruth. And usually... The people of God do the wrong thing. Abraham's famine, he went down to Egypt. In the book of Ruth, they went into Moab. This famine causes Isaac to go to Gerar. Now again, when we spoke about in Genesis 20, Abimelech, this is not the same guy that Abraham dealt with. This is a title of a man. So Gerar deals with Abraham and then deals with his son Isaac. And the Lord appeared unto him, Isaac, and said, Go not down into Egypt. And that's what God's idea is to all the Jews and all Christians. Do not go to Egypt. Do not go to the world. Egypt pictures the world. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. And he's not in the land that he should be in. And we'll see that in a moment. Sojourn, dwell for a time, temporary dwelling. Sojourn in the land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, make you happy. For unto thee, and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries. I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father, that blessing thou hast passed from Abraham, and has passed to Isaac. The land that you are, the land that I gave Abraham, goes to Isaac, verse 1, and not Ishmael. The blessings upon Abraham, them that bless you, I will bless. Them that curse you, I will curse. Passes on to Isaac. Goes right over Ishmael. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. Again, he has two boys. He has Esau, the Edomites. He has Jacob, which will become the 12 tribes of Israel, and from there. And will give unto thy seed all these countries. Now, the, the seed will be particularly Jacob. I don't know if Isaac knew what happened of the birthright in the previous chapter. We're not told. So Isaac would be thinking, hey, it's Esau. In reality, it's Jacob and the twelve tribes. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And out of Isaac, out of Jacob, out of Judah comes the Lord Jesus Christ. That is one of the things that, he, that was despised by Esau. That birthright. That if Esau would have kept that birthright... From him would have came the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. But he sold it for beans. You don't ever see Esau in the line of Jesus Christ at all. You see Moab there. You'll see Ruth. Esau despised it. So all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. That is the prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. That in that seed of Jacob, Judah. Uh, Luke chapter 3 is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
because that Abraham obeyed my voice. That's remarkable. And kept my charge. Remarkable. My commandments. My statutes. And my laws. That's interesting. The law doesn't come to Israel to Exodus 20. And yet we are recorded that there are laws and commandments and statutes before the capital L law. God has set before Abraham rules and regulations for Abraham to do right. And he kept them. <clears throat> and Isaac dwelt in Gerar, Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife. This is Rebecca. He, he said, she is my sister. Well, this is not going to work like Abraham. Because in reality, they're cousins. Abraham has died. No, wait a minute, no. Take that back. But you... Where did Isaac get this excuse from his, from his father that happened twice in Abraham's life? One is Abram, and one is Abraham. Sarah tell him, you know, we're brothers and sisters, which is true. Just not the same mother. So Isaac thinking that if dad did it and got out of trouble, I'm going to do it and get me out of trouble. Well, he didn't hear the whole story. He didn't hear how Pharaoh rebuked them. He didn't realize that Abimelech rebuked both of them and Sarah. So maybe I can get away with it. For he feared to say, she is my wife. Fear will make you lie. Fear will make you say something so I do not have to face the consequences. Did you do it? No, I didn't do it. I, you know, I won't get beat and I won't get in trouble. Fear is a troubling thing. It will make you do wrong when you're not the fear of God. Fear of God will have you do right. But the fear of anything else will have you do wrong. The fear of man, the fear of the world, the fear of Satan. We're to fear God. When we fear God, we get wisdom. When we fear God, we get instruction. When we fear God, we get understanding. Let us fear God and nothing else. But we all have a fear. We have our fears. He feared to say she is my wife. He and he's worried again that they're going to kill me for it. Just like his father was. Least, said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebecca. Because she was fair to look upon. So again, the Bible says in the New Testament, a man is to love his wife as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time. That Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah his wife. Now you find this in Judges 16, 25 to 27. They made sport of Samson. Now this sporting is an interesting idea because you will find in most of your newspapers and your television newscast, they have a thing called sport or sports. Abimelech looks out his window and the idea he gets that those two are sporting. Throwing a football, throwing a baseball, playing some hockey. Well, let's let this, yeah, the scripture says, And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife. We're not talking about football. We're not talking about a baseball. Whatever Isaac and Rebecca were doing, Abimelech says, you're married. And there's nothing in the world that could be of the marriage bed of foreplay between a husband and wife that a guy would say, hey, you two are married. So when we take the Bible word sport, Samson was naked, remember? 
when he stood with those people. They had a little boy by him. I'm not going any further. They made sport of Samson. This sport here, for sure you two are married. What other conclusions can you get from the word sport? Behold of a surety. Not so in America. She is thy wife. And how sayest thou she is my sister? Ooh, they're going to get another rebuke. Brothers and sisters don't do that. Don't do what? Sport. Well, you can have a brother and sister fall ball, throw a ball back and forth, play tennis. That's not the sport we're talking about. And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Least I die for her. So he admits his wrong. And Abimelech said, What is this that thou hast done unto us? Now they're probably going through the chronicles of, of Gerar, and they realize in Egypt too that this has happened before. With this man's father and his mother. Now they've set a terrible example to the world that this must be a family thing. His dad did it and now he's doing it. One of the people might have lined with thy wife. They may have taken her in. And that thou shouldest brought guiltness upon us. Adultery is known as a sin. Even among people who are not God's people. It's in the heart. And the biblical charge all his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Capital punishment. It's a shame that you had to come up with that lie. So anybody that touches you, anybody that touches your wife, they're going to die. And when this happens, when this is said by Gerard, the king of Gerard, you will die. You don't go to jail and you don't wait. You don't get... You die. And probably with these people public execution. Then Isaac goes to a whole different story now. Sold in that land. That means he planted. And received in the same year a hundredfold has never ever happened. Come on. Are you telling me you can say that you planted all your tomatoes, all your cucumbers, all your peas, all your broccoli with all you planted everything in your garden and every single seed produced that's what happened to Isaac everything came to be 100 percent realize how much crops that he had that day that for well, that season a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him wasn't it enough that he got a hundredfold and God blessed him? Isn't God just too wonderful to us? You just lied to a nation, almost got in trouble. Here's a hundred percent crops for you, and I'm going to make you happier. The man, Isaac, waxed great. He got bigger and bigger, not size, but, you know, and went forth forward and grew until he became very great strength wealth power for he had possession of flocks possession of herds cattle and sheep and ram and great store of servants and all these are bought barbered and the philistines envied him now, the Philistines are not the enemies of God yet. They're getting along. They will become the enemy. And all the wells... Hmm? What? What did I mention? For all, for all the wells... Now, you need wells. You need water. Places like Death Valley in America, there is no towns, there's no cities because there's no water. 
and it looks like from this chapter is you you dig a well and that water is not going to survive all the time and when that dries up you gotta go find another one and all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth they didn't want Abraham around and we saw that previous in, Gen in Genesis when they told Abraham to leave and I was soon if they close up these wells it probably may have brought more water to their wells I could be wrong and Abimelech said unto Isaac go from us for thou art much mightier than we you got so much cattle you got so much animals just leave us and like Abraham and Lot we, we can't live in a land like this and Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gear and dwelt there and Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father he's gonna try to unbury him for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham so Abraham is dead and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them so they dig a well and they would name it Isaac picks up the same names and Isaac's service digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water it's good water you can drink and the herdmen of Gerard did strive fight argue battle with Isaac's herdmen see the herdmen the herdmen wanted to feed their cattle Gerard wanted to feed their animals there's not enough saying the water is ours and he called the name of the well Essex because they strove with it Essex means strove fighting they're battling two cow two cowboy uh, groups fighting for the water hole like Lot and Abraham and they digged another well and strove for that also and he called the name of it Sittim or Shittim, which means hated or hatred so what Isaac is doing now with the Philistines is he's building temperament he's building argument with the Philistines by these wells and they digged another well and strove for that also and he called the name of Shittim hatred and he removed from thence he goes to another place and digged another well and for that for that they strove not there's no battle there's no problems and he called the name of it Rehoboth and he said for now the Lord Jehovah capital L capital O capital R capital D has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land this one means large room but he's not satisfied and he went up from thence to Beersheba something worked on his heart yeah we got room here but this is not a settling place let's go back to Beersheba let's go back to the land where my father let's go back where God wanted me to do he's out of the will of God in, in Gerar he's out of the will of God verses 17 to 22 and the Lord appeared unto him that same night and he's in Beersheba so he was in the wrong place and said I am the God of Abraham thy father fear not you are fearing in Gerar for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. not because of you Isaac it's not because of me I'm blessed by God it's by the Son Jesus Christ I am not righteous I am righteous by Jesus Christ the Son and he built he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there and there Isaac's servants dig the well then Abimelech went to him from Gerar and Hazath, one of his friends, and Phicol, the chief captain of his army. 
So now that they're coming to see Isaac. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me? So Isaac has put a little bad temper into Philistines. And he sent me away, and have sent me away from you. He told me, get out of here. We're enemies. You hate me. What, what, what are you doing back here? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. The testimony of Isaac. God's with you. And we said, Let there be now an oath betwixt, that's between us, and betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee. Now you're going to find the other covenant made in Genesis 21 between Abraham and Abimelech. In the same place. Remember Abraham took a few lambs and, and set them apart. He's like, what are you doing this for? This is a covenant between you and me for peace. That thou will do us no hurt. As we have not touched thee. As we have done unto thee nothing but good. And have sent thee away in peace. Thou art now the blessed of the Lord. I thought that was Mary. No. Isaac is blessed of the Lord. Isaac is happy with the Lord. Isaac got the 100% growth of the crop. Isaac has got the love of God. Isaac has received the blessings of Abraham his father. And the in the world, the Philistines have said, man, that guy is... God's working with him. And if there's one thing we don't want to do. We don't want to anger Isaac. And that means if we anger Isaac, it's going to anger his God. And we don't want that. Let's make peace. So let's have no trouble between the two of us. And he made them a feast. Now, Abraham did not make a feast. He took some of his animals and put them off to the side. Isaac makes a feast. Isaac likes meals. He loves his son because he's the greatest, the firstborn of... No. He loves his son because it is his venison. We're going to see in the next chapter, Isaac is going to be deceived over a meal. Isaac has something to do with food. And they did eat and drink. All Abraham did was get, here's some you animals over here, and here's some animals over here. What are you doing? This is the oath between you and me. Now we're having a dinner. Huh? He goes, yeah, man, okay, maybe it's true. Maybe Dick was big and great. The guy, the Holy Spirit records to us that he loves the son because of his venison. And the next chapter, son, it's time to give you your blessing. It's time to give you your firstborn right as a son. I'm going to, I'm going to pass it on to you, but go get me the supersized meal of venison. And we'll see wine and bread. And it's the kind of meal you just sit down and enjoy. You don't ever see any father in the Bible passing that right on to him. You do not see in the Lord. Okay, when you give that first right to your son, first of all, beg for a meal. It's not in there. Be like, son, you put your arm around him and say, hey, you're about that age. You're about that time. I'm getting old. Let's come over here. Let's have a little talk. Let me explain to you what this first right is, what I'm about to do. And I think you are now able, and let me... Pass it on to you. No. Yeah, I want a meal. I want peace like my father had peace with you. All right, let's sit down and have a meal. And they rose up beat times, that's like before it's too late, in the morning, and swear one to another. And Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged. And said unto him, We have found water. And he called it Sheba. 
Therefore, the name of the city. I'm trying to find a note I got here. 2131 is Beersheba unto this day. And Beersheba is one of the principal, the southernmost mark in the land of Israel. Dan, the city of Dan, is the northern peak of Israel. And you'll see from Dan to Beersheba. This is where Isaac, this is where Abraham made a covenant. This is where they dwell. And then we got another little thing. And Esau was 40 years old, same time his dad was, when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Berari, the Hittite. He's mixed marriage in. And another wife, Bashman Mass, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. And let's see what the Bible records. Which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and unto Rebekah. But remember, who cares about Esau anymore? He sold that birthright. We're not looking for that race of people for Jesus Christ and Jesus. Go marry whoever you want now. Go marry the world. But we're going to see in the next chapter, in the chapter after that, Jacob, you're the firstborn, right? We got to find you with the right woman. And we're going to see Esau, he ain't done mixed marriage anymore and causing troubles and problems. Do you know what, what the Edomites are to God? They are the enemies. When Babylon comes into Judah and destroys Jerusalem, I forget which which minor prophet writes about that. Um, the name's on the tip of my tongue. Maybe come. But when Israel, the Judah, Judah, run and try to get away from Nebuchadnezzar, Obed, Obed Obadiah. The book is Obadiah. Esau catches these runaway Jews catches them and brings them to Nebuchadnezzar's army and said here we caught these Jews for you and Obadiah chews God chews out the Edomites and says ooh I will curse you that curse my children when Jacob steals that blessing even though it's not stolen that brings hatred between Edomites and the Jewish people. 